Hi everyone, my name is Raquel Ortazio and I'm the Chief Scientist at Uber ETG, as well as a professor at the University of Toronto. In this talk, I'm going to talk about adversarial attacks and robustness in the, cost, in the context of self-driving. First, I will very briefly review how self-driving systems work. I will then showcase adversarial attacks in the context of modern 3D perception algorithms, emphasizing what are the properties of those attacks that we are interested in and how to potentially defend against them. I will show how to increase robustness of perception and motion forecasting systems via vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication and the vulnerability that this introduces. Finally, I will discuss mechanisms to increase robustness in this setting. Let's start by reviewing how autonomous systems work. Every fraction of a second, um, the vehicle senses the environment. This is illustrated here with a bird's eye view of the LiDAR point cloud. The first task is then to localize the vehicle with precision of a few centimeters. This is, um, this is done not only to route the vehicle to the desired destination, but also to utilize high definition maps as prior knowledge for subsequent tasks. The perception system is then responsible for estimating where the objects are in the scene. Here depicted with rectangles for vehicles and circles for pedestrians. The prediction system then takes the output of perception and estimates the potential trajectories that the actors might take in the next few seconds. Then the machine planning module focuses on a region around the self-driving car and estimates the safest maneuver towards the goal that the vehicle should do in the next few seconds. The control system then ensures that the trajectory we intended to follow is the one that is executed, as there might be deviations due to unaccounted factors such as friction and simplistic vehicle dynamics. This full process is then repeated every fraction of a second, typically 100 milliseconds. Now that we know how self driving cars work, let's talk about adversarial, attack, uh, adversarial attacks in this domain. Deep neural networks are widely used for computer vision. While they produce impressive results, they are vulnerable to adversarial attacks where imperceptible noise can create false predictions. This is a major concern for safety critical applications such as self driving. Adversarial attacks were traditionally explored in the white box set setting, where the model is known. In this case, adversarial examples are generated with gradient based optimization and inputs are modified to produce false labels. However, access to the model is not always practical. In black box settings, where the gradients are unavailable, attacks are still possible. Here, query based attacks can be executed by querying the model and using black box optimization. Even when queries are not available, weaker transfer attacks can be executed by training a surrogate model to estimate the true gradients. In particular, practical real-world adversaries can be synthesized in the form of stickers or 3D objects. These adversaries are universal and input agnostic, meaning they are adversarial across different environments, lighting, pose, etc. Such attacks are highly relevant in practice as they do not require prior knowledge of the input. In the context of self-driving, universal and physically realizable adversaries are particularly concerning. Physically realizable adversaries can be synthesized and placed on the road. On the other hand, universal adversaries are robust to the motion of dynamic objects, meaning they can consistently fool self-driving perception across time to damage downstream tasks. To be more robust to these adversaries, we must first identify them. LIDAR sensors are popular for collecting sensor information in modern self-driving stacks. Thus, 3D object uh, detection from point clouds is a staple in self-driving perception models. We would like to know if there are any physically realizable adversarial scenarios where LIDAR detection models consistently fail. We are interested in consistent failure to impact downstream tasks. There are many ways um, to fool a detector but we choose to focus on hiding uh, vehicles as it can lead to dangerous collisions. To make the attack physically realizable, we parameterize it as a 3D printable mesh. The mesh is placed on uh, vehicle rooftops for several reasons. It's easier to place due to gravity, less prone to occlusions, and it resembles realistic rooftop cargoes like furniture and sport equipment that we might see in the real world. Finally, we aim to make the, uh, the adversary universal, hiding vehicles across time and space with high confidence and making it robust to other uh, variations in the environment. 
But please, in, um, our adversary I mentioned a vehicle roof, we can hide the vehicle with high probability, no matter what kind of car it is, what its pose is, and what the environment is. Note that our mesh is the same for all vehicles. As shown in the illustration, the same adversarial mesh successfully hides for different vehicles at different positions in different scenes. Furthermore, with a single adversarial example for all inputs, no optimization is required during the attack. With a string to discover a single mesh that is an adversary against all vehicles in the training set. This makes the adversary input agnostic under the training distribution. Towards this goal, we use a differentiable renderer to bridge the gap between the mesh representation, uh, the mesh representing the physical object, and what the sensor sees, which is a point cloud, and optimize an adversarial objective targeted at minimizing detection scores to hide vehicles. In particular, to minimize detection scores, our adversarial loss minimizes the confidence of all bounding box proposals. In addition, we with proposals by the intersection of our union with the ground truth to, to prioritize um, high uh, quality proposals. We mainly rely on black box optimization as it is applicable to all models. Even when gradients are available, we find that white box attacks are of similar strengths since black box optimization works well uh, for the low dimensional mesh parameterization. Let's see an illustration of how our algorithm works. We first start with a later strip, which is the input to our detectors. Then we aim to hide a vehicle from the detector. To do this, we add a physically realizable object into the scene. Here we choose a mesh as our representation, as it can be 3D printed. Then we use a differential renderer to render the mesh into a point cloud and attach it to the top of the vehicle. To determine the location of the roof, we fit a vehicle mesh to the point cloud. We then add the mesh points onto the vehicle rooftop to create a modified scene. The modified scene is then processed by a detector to produce output bounding boxes. And to optimize our adversary, we apply the adversarial loss targeted at hiding the vehicle. So this is the process um, that is done during training. Here is a qualitative demonstration of our attack. The same adversarial mesh is used throughout the whole video. Notice in the top right, in the original snippet, um, the, target video, uh, the target vehicle is consistently detected. However, on the bottom right, after adding the adversary, the vehicle is hidden in most frames. That's presented, presenting a great threat to our self-driving vehicle. We evaluate our attack against models with different input representations. We use Pixel, which is, takes occupancy voxels and a variation taking density voxels, Pointer CNN, which processes raw point sets, and Point Pillar, which divides points into pillars and extracts features with a point net. We evaluate the attack on Kitty. Our metric is attack success rate, the percentage of originally detected vehicles that are not detected after perturbation. We also include transfer attacks, where we train the mesh to attack one detector and evaluate, this, um, and evaluate it against another detector. In this table, rows describe the model using training and columns are, model, um, are models during evaluation. Thus, the diagonal represents the standard attacks. Our results show that different input representations have different levels of vulnerability. Of the diagonals are transfer attacks. We observe a high degree of transferability between models with the same architecture, as is the case in the two pixel variants. We observe low transferability elsewhere, indicating input representations may have a large effect on the, feature, um, on the features a model learns and its vulnerabilities. To verify that input representations indeed impact robustness, we conduct an experiment where we replace pixels occupancy voxel representation with pillar featuring columns. We are able to use the same backbone and training uh, schemes since both pixel and point pillars perform 2D convolution in Versailles view. Here, pixel star is significantly more robust purely due to different input representation. This suggests that additional point level reasoning before aggregation in the high dimension increases robustness to rooftop objects. Here we compare white box optimization against black box and find that black box optimization is, much, much weak, is not much weaker. Furthermore, we benchmark against the mesh that is used for initialization on our adversarial attacks. 
While the initial mesh is similar in size, it has little impact on detection recall. On the other hand, the adversarial mesh drops recall significantly, showing the geometry is indeed adversarial. Even without malicious intent, these scenarios can coincidentally occur in practice in the form of rooftop cargo. We conduct experiments where we initialize the mesh from common rooftop objects and additionally place an epsilon constraint on mesh vertices to maintain resemblance to the original. Here we measure attack success rate again and find adversaries uh, that are very similar to real world furniture and sport equipment. Particularly, we find larger objects like couches and canoes to be especially effective. A smaller and thinner objects like chairs and bikes are weaker as they generate less later points. We conduct a pilot study um, on defense with two approaches. First, we perform documentation by adding random meshes to vehicle rooftops during uh, training. By training against random rooftop objects, we can greatly improve robustness. Next, we use adversarial training, which adds adversarial meshes into the scene during training. Here, we simultaneously update the adversarial mesh and the model. Furthermore, we also show detection performance on the unperturbed dataset in the rightmost column and show that a defending model achieves similar or better performance. Thus, by training against our adversaries, models become much more robust to out-of-distribution rooftop adversaries. Our work is a step towards safer self-driving and ransom conditions from limited training data. We are now going to pause our discussion on adversarial examples for self-driving, and we are going to uh, fast forward into how the future might look like. But first, Let's analyze the main challenges that current state-of-the-art perception and prediction systems, PMP for short, have. Recall that the sensor readings, PMP pro um, recall that given the sensor readings, PMP provides the location of objects in 3D, as well as the future trajectories for the duration of the planning horizon. PMP system suffer from low visibility in faraway areas and occluded regions due to limited sensor data as compared to nearby and occluded vehicles. Modern improvements and training techniques can only go so far to improve PMP when there is little or no evidence. Here we pursue another direction to improving the robustness of PMP. Vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication or V2V allows a fleet of vehicles to cooperatively view the world from multiple viewpoints and communicate what they see with each other thereby seeing through occlusions and seeing farther. To leverage B2B to improve the uh, PMP system for self-driving, we first need to decide what information to be shared um, to be shared the vehicle should transmit. Two options immediately come to mind, transmitting input sensor information or transmitting perception and prediction outputs. When we transmit input sensor data, we gain the benefits of no information loss. Each self-driving vehicle, SDV, has, a, has access to the same information seen by the other vehicles. However, sensor data is large in size, and the more sensors there are on the vehicle, the more information there is to be sent. Furthermore, each vehicle will still uh, need to process all the received sensor data, resulting in redundant computation. This makes the approach not scalable. Our second option is to transmit the outputs of perception and prediction. The main advantage is that messages will be very compact, as describing bounding boxes and trajectories require few parameters compared to later inputs. However, only transmitting output is discussed in context and active properties other than position and velocity that may be very useful for PMP reasoning. To achieve the best balance of a small message size and improve performance, we propose transmitting intermediate representations of the neural networks, performing joint perception and prediction. This gives us the best trade-off, as the intermediate representations are typically compact since they are highly compressible, while still containing information about the same context. Also, the expressiveness is not limited in, con in contrast to output representations. Moreover, using intermediate features leverages distributed computation from multiple vehicles, as each vehicle first processes their own sensor data, and thus this computation is already done when, res when received by the other vehicles. The question now is how to intelligently combine these um, intermediate representations to improve perception and prediction. 
We propose V2V net, the first sophisticated AI based V2V approach, which aggregates intermediate features with a graph neural network. First, sensory uh, inputs are encoded into a compact representation, which is then compressed and broadcast to other uh, vehicles. Then messages from other vehicles are received and they compress and all features are aggregated with a specially aware uh, graph neural network. Finally, the aggregated features are processed to generate uh, PMP outputs. The key component of our method is the specially aware GNN, which intellig intelligently combines observations from multiple views seen at different points in time. We now discuss this component in more detail. First, each vehicle receives intermediate features in bird's eye view, along with the timestamp of the messages and the relative pose of the nearby senders. Including the timestamp and relative pose is important as the, V2V, um, as the V2V involves a synchronous vehicle communication and the relative pose provides insight into which areas are viewed by each SDV. Next, we concatenate the time delay to message features and use a CNN to learn to compensate for messages with a delayed, delayed timestamp. The time delay is easily accessible as all vehicles have access to a global clock. After time delay compensation, the messages are aggregated by the GNN. At, it, at each message passing stage, the feature maps are warped into the same coordinate frame of the receiving node and features inside the region of interest are used for accumulation. The GNN intelligently aggregates intermediate representations in a spatially aware manner. When it comes to evaluating B2B methods, there is a lack of suitable real world data sets. Existing data sets are created in a platoon or convoy setting where cars closely follow one another as uh, can be seen on the right. Observations captured in the setting are highly correlated and therefore fail to capture the diverse B2B scenarios that will occur in practice. For example, in the convoy setting, we will never see SDVs approaching from the opposite direction. To address the lack of benchmarks, we created B2B SIM, a large scale B2B dataset um, using our new high fidelity LiDAR simulator, which faithfully replicates real world LiDAR scans. In this data set, we take the 3D reconstruction of logs of real world LiDAR strips and simulate them for the viewpoint of the other vehicles in the scene. Then, all other vehicles can act as SDVs. By doing so, our SDV topologies directly correspond to real traffic scenarios. To create the uh, B2B SIM dataset, we leverage millions of miles collected by our SDB fleet to create simulation worlds that are realistic, such as the background meshes and dynamic objects seen on the right. Since we are doing B2B, we will be simulating sensor data from new viewpoints, which means it's important we have good coverage of the background meshes and dynamic objects we create. Here we show the process of creating background meshes with uh, good coverage. We record real LiDAR data by driving in an area and remove moving objects. We aggregate and align the LiDAR, combine across multiple trajectories, and create a mesh self representation. A similar process is done to generate dynamic objects. We utilize a symmetric prior to get a complete shape of the object. Leverage and real world uh, data allow us to inject the diversity of objects seen in the real world into LiDAR set. From left to right, we can see cars with open hoods or trunks, bicycles on top of the car, flatbed trucks with construction cones, and trailers with extended cars. Making sure we can detect these rare objects as vehicles is important, and by leveraging real data, we can simulate more situations that are in the long tail. You often don't see the diversity, this diversity from other 3D assets or CAD model datasets. Once we generate our assets, we can place them in a scene configuration, just like in a video game. We now have scalable and diverse scenes. We then perform realistic sensor simulation with a combination of physics and machine learning. LIDAR generates point clouds by shooting light into the scene and measuring the travel time to determine an object's distance. To mimic this process, we recast our scene and generate a simulated point cloud. However, recasting generates more returns than real LiDAR, since the return li uh, light does not always meet the detection threshold. We call this phenomenon ray drop. Ray drop is complicated to simulate by physics alone, because we don't know the physical parameters of the real world. 
Fortunately, using a red drop network, we leverage real-world data and ML to bridge this sim to real gap. Here you can see an example of, B2B SIM, of a B2B SIM scenario. With this constructed virtual world, we can now simulate realistic LADAR from different vehicle viewpoints, as shown on the right. Each color uh, autonomous vehicle has a corresponding color LADAR point cloud generated. We allow up to seven SDVs in, in each frame uh, in our data set. Here are the quantitative results of our method on a simulated B2B dataset. Average precision uh, measures detection performance, L2 error measures error of predicted trajectories, and TCR measures the collision rate of predicted trajectories. With B2B net, we can reduce the perception error rate by 68% when compared to single vehicle, no fusion performance shown on the first, shown on the first row. Furthermore, B2B net achieves superior performance to both the input later fusion baseline and output bounding box uh, fusion and trajectory fusion baseline. As mentioned earlier, transmitting intermediate representations allows for highly compressible message, uh, message sizes. By incorporating valid compression, B2B net achieves the best trade off between message size and performance on both uh, PMP metrics. At 10 Hz, our method only requires 0.2 megabytes per second during communication, which is easily satisfied as the cheapest dedicated short range communication hardware uh, provides more than 3 megabytes per second. B2B performance in PMP tasks also increase with the number of vehicles in the network. As the density of SDVs increase in the real world, B2B communication will become even more effective. B2B um, provides dramatic improvements on far away and occluded vehicles, as shown in the top right of the figure, since there is a significant lack of later evidence in these cases. Furthermore, B2B net is particularly effective at detecting vehicles with high speed, as shown in the bottom row, beating later and up with fusion by a large margin. High speed vehicles are often difficult to handle due to motion blur and rolling shutter. This if these effects are due to the fact that since the vehicles are moving, the later observations become warped by the camera image on the left, making it difficult to predict where the object is at a specific point in time. The previous experiments assume perfect localization of the SDVs, as we need the relative post transform messages into a shared coordinate system. But in the real world, there may be localization errors. We evaluate the performance when we add noise to the estimated position and heading of each SDV, as shown in the left and right column of the figure, respectively. Unlike other fusion methods, B2B net is more robust to localization errors, as leveraging GNNs, the GNN allows us to intelligently aggregate the messages and be more robust to this type of error. Furthermore, in the real world, we cannot always expect messages to arrive with perfect timestamps. It's important that B2B communication is robust to delay messages. Here, our proposed B2B net is much more robust than the other fusion alternatives. In this evaluation, we account for time to delay in object fusion by extra, um, extrapolating uh, vehicle trajectories. No compensation is done for later fusion, as extrapolating later point clouds is non trivial. We now show some qualitative uh, examples. The ground truth is in red. B2B outputs are depicted in green, and single vehicle outputs are in blue. Here is an example where we showcase the significantly higher recall of B2B net. All the green boxes, uh, where B2B, all the green boxes where B2B net uh, detects vehicles are missed in this single vehicle case. Here, B2B net can detect a high speed vehicle behind, and that's way before performing a lane change. B2B net pushes the, perform, um, the perception and prediction performance even further, allowing for even higher operating speeds while simultaneously providing safer and more comfortable driving. We have seen that vehicle to vehicle communication introduces incredible benefits. However, relying on communication between agents may introduce new security vulnerabilities. In particular, communication channels can be compromised to inject adversarial messages. Such adversarial messages can severely degrade performance. By setting a small epsilon constraints on the perturbations, the adversarial messages 
are almost indistinguishable from the original, making them difficult to detect as well. We next study how to create perturbations that are added on the top of the messages, which are intermediate network representations. In object detection, detectors, detectors output proposals, each with a bounding box, class and confidence score. We can attack the output by changing the class label of these proposals. We can generate false negatives by changing classes of detected objects to the background class to make objects disappear. On the other hand, false positives can be generated by changing background classes to an object class to make the detection model hallucinate. In a whiteboard setting, attackers can easily create adversarial messages using gradient-based updates to generate false class labels. However, full access to the model running in DSDB is not practical. In a scenario where communication channels are compromised, attackers can still execute adversarial human in the loop attacks without access to gradients. Here, the attacker can only eavesdrop on the communication channels and does not have access to sensory measurements of the vehicles. To do so, the attacker needs to train a surrogate model to approximate the gradients of the target model. By doing so, perturbations generated by the surrogate model will transfer to intermediate features of the target model. However, this requires the surrogate um, to produce similar intermediate representations. While the attacker cannot access the target model, the intermediate features of the target model are available by spying on the communication channel. Thus, when training the surrogate model, we use a discriminator to match the distribution of the surrogate intermediate features to those of the target model. We use a discriminator instead of distillation since the communication channel does not contain sensory inputs associated with each message. Thus, uh, we don't have fair data. In addition, the surrogate model is also trained to perform the same precession task to imitate the behavior of the target model. Once the surrogate model is trained, we can execute attacks by using gradient-based updates to generate a transferable perturbation using the surrogate model and adding it um, and, and adding it onto the benign message. In contrast to the universal attack shown previously where computation is not required during the attack, performing optimization in every time step of an online attack is extremely expensive. However, in an online setting, we can exploit the redundancy between consecutive frames to create more efficient attacks. Specifically, we can use the perturbation from a previous frame as initialization for the current. In addition, we apply a rigid transformation at every time step to account for ego motion. By doing so, we can synchronize the perturbations with the movements of sensory measurements relative to the ego curve. Here are some results of our attack. We plot the average precision at different numbers of agents. We show a no attack baseline and a noise baseline where random uniform noise um, uh, with the same bound is added. Our white box attack is able to drop AP significantly at few agents, but the model becomes more robust with more agents. Our transfer attack is able to achieve a small degree of success, but as expected is much weaker uh, than a white box attack. Here is a qualitative demonstration of our attack. We show the benign feature map in the top left of the uh, on the top left and the perturbation on the right. The perturbation is very small, as can be seen from the color scale. On the bottom left, the unperturbed message produces mostly co uh, correct detections. After adding the perturbation, see all the false positive and false negatives in the bottom right. Here we demonstrate the necessity of using domain adaptation to align intermediate representations of the surrogate model. We compare generating perturbations with three models, the original model, a surrogate with domain adaptation, and a surrogate without. We evaluate in a setting with only two CDBs in the network. First, using the original model to generate perturbations is equivalent to a white box, white box attack and is very strong. Then, notice the attack is completely ineffective without domain adaptation. Next, we evaluate cross-inference, which is using the surrogate model to process the intermediate features of the target model, which evaluates how well the surrogate imitates the target. 
we can see that domain adaptation makes a drastic difference here. Here is a qualitative demonstration of domain adaptation. We show four channels of the intermediate feature maps. Notice the similarity between the target model and the surrogate with domain adaptation. But without domain adaptation, the features look very different. We conduct an ablation of our method to perform efficient online attacks. In the networking baselines, we do now perform rigid transformations to account for eagle motion, which results in a slightly weaker attack. In the independent setting, we ignore temporal redundancy and treat each frame as independent, thus not reusing previous perturbations. The attack becomes significantly weaker here. Okay, so, so we've talked a lot about the attacks, but in cell driving, we are interested in gaining robustness against possible attacks. So let's talk about robustness. In the work I'm going to show you now, well, we we're going to continue to study the B2B uh, net setting where messages are encoded, transmitted, aggregated, and then used for downstream PMP tasks. The amazing performance benefit of B2B net can be quickly diminished in the presence of localization noise of the transmitted vehicles. Observing this plot that even with one degree of heading error or 15 centimeters of positional error, um, this is the localization error of the uh, different cell driving cars, B2B net performance becomes worse than inference without fusion. So this is problematic. BTV net is able to achieve significant perception and prediction improvements by fusing information from other SDPs in the network. Information in the form of intermediate neural representations are fused by a specially aware graph neural network. When performing the spatial aggregation of the incoming messages, localization error causes the work messages to be misaligned, which significantly um, detriments downstream perception and prediction performance. To handle this issue, we propose a cooperative correction framework that leverages the multi-agent setting to correct incoming messages. First, we use a post-regression model that considers the ego message and, and each work incoming message to predict a corrected relative pause between the two vehicles. However, regressing individual pauses may lead to inconsistent beliefs between different SDBs. Therefore, we aim to refine the relative poses and propose to push the agents to come to a consensus about each other's poses using a novel robust synchronization algorithm. Concretely, we use a conditional random field where each vehicle's pose is a node and we condition on the predicted relative poses. We describe here the consistency model in details. Purpose correction can result in inconsistent pose um, whenever there is a loop in the neighboring graph. In our CRF energy formulation, there are only edge potentials and the edges are weighted to achieve robust, uh, robustness against outliers. The likelihood is based on a T uh, distribution on the discrepancy between the pose, by, uh, uh, the pose predicted by the neighbors and the, uh, and the self belief. Note that the edges are undirected and likelihoods uh, from both directions are multiplied together. The weight prior is gamma distributed based on the overlap uh, of area between a pair of agents. The more overlap, the more likely the edge gets more weight. We perform inference with a variant of the YAL algorithm where the maximization step is achieved by the iterative conditional modes for a ICM algorithm. Thanks to the gamma prior, the edge weights update can be obtained in close form. To infer the pose for each agent, we maximize one agent at a time. This is what ICM does. And we repeat this process iteratively between alternative between the close uh, form solution and uh, um, iterating the pose. Learning can be simply done by backpropagation through the AIM process here. After the vehicle reaches a consensus about the poses, after the vehicle, sorry, reach, uh, reach a consensus about the poses, there may still be a virus uh, poisoning the messages. Given a refined work message and the ego message, we predict an attention weight um, for that incoming message. These weights are then passed into v 2 uh, GNN along with the feature maps. During GNN message passing, each message is weighted according to the predicted attention weights. 
Finally, these corrected messages are used in B2Bnet to output perception and prediction estimates. We evaluate our approach um, on B2B SIM, the same data set used for B2Bnet, but perturb it to add SDB post noise. During evaluation, we sample Gaussian noise with a fixed standard deviation of 0.1 meter or one degree and vary the bias to control the amount of noise. During training, we sample weak and strong noise, both centered at zero, but weak noise having a small standard deviation and a strong having much higher. We deliberately generate two separate noise levels to supervise the tension model to distinguish noise samples. We compare our approach to uh, our method to B2Bnet, single vehicle perception, B2Bnet with post noise data augmentation, and learn to sync a state of the art synchronization algorithm. In particular, learn to sync processes that maps and iteratively reweights pairwise registrations um, to achieve global consistency poses. To adapt this algorithm to our problem setting, we use a larger architecture and initialize pairwise registrations with our pre trained post regression model. With our proposed method, we see nearly constant perception and prediction performance for noise seen in the training set. We see reliable performance of our method for noise not seen in the training set, which is noise uh, greater than 0.4 meters, meters and 4 degrees standard deviation. Here is a qualitative example where we see the effects of the post noise with and without the correction. Predictions are in blue and ground truth is in red, with three positives in purple. Without correction on the left, we see that vehicles are misdetected. In particular, vehicles that are far away or occluded are more effective. On the right, with correction, the outputs are much better aligned with the ground truth. Here is another qualitative example. We can clearly see in the zoom in section the effects of rotational post error as the outputs are rotated away from the ground truth. Long range detections are severely affected by this type of error. To conclude, I have talked about how to create universal adversarial attacks that are physically realizable for modern state-of-the-art 3D perception algorithms in self-driving. I have then discussed how to increase robustness by exploiting vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication and how, that, and how this might introduce additional values for adversarial attacks. Finally, I have shown how to, how to be robust to localization errors by exploiting a multi-agent cooperative consensus framework. This is all for me today. Thanks for your attention. Hope you guys enjoyed.